I'm gonna show you how I create high quality, quality data sets for my AI training. This is important in order to get a good sounding model. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, so you need some prerequisites for this Python, Git, and VS Code. A link down below in the description towards a video that shows you how to install them. And everything else, I'm gonna show you how to get in today's video. And one last thing to keep in mind is hardware. So I was able to get this running on my i7-8650U on my laptop, but it was really slow. So this is going to vary from person to person for how fast it's gonna run based on your hardware. All right, let's run into the installation part of the video. We're gonna be using some custom code that I coded up for this video, audio splitter underscore whisper. So this is where Git, Python, and all that is gonna come in handy. First, open up a new file explorer. Then what we're going to do is go ahead, right click or shift, right click. And then we're going to go ahead and do open in terminal. Once we have this open in terminal, we're going to go over into our GitHub, click on the code button up at the top and then click the copy button and then go back into the terminal window. We're going to do Git clone and then we're going to paste this into there. So like I said, you need to have Git installed in order for this to work. Link down below in the description to that video. And this should be all good to go here. So now that we have that cloned up, we need to now go install some other things. So go ahead, close out of this window. Uh, we're going to need to install ultimate vocal remover. So go ahead and scroll down, click this main download link. And then you're going to go ahead and save it somewhere. I already have it downloaded. And then the next thing we're going to download is FFmpeg. So a link to this page is going to be in the description as well. What you want to do is click this FFmpeg git fool.z.7z and then save this into a folder as well. Cool. So we should have FFmpeg, we should have the UVR set up, and then we should have the GitHub repository cloned. So what we're going to do is install UVR now. So go ahead and go ahead and head on over to where you have it installed and double click into the setup.exe. This window is going to pop up. Go ahead and accept the agreement. Go next. Um, you can choose to create a desktop shortcut if you want. Go next and then click install and it's going to install on your computer. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do it. And if you're wondering where it installs, you go percent app data percent um, once you're in here, click on app data, go into local, scroll down until you see programs, double click into programs, and you'll see the ultimate vocal remover file here. So here is the ultimate vocal remover. Once you're in here, you can scroll all the way down to the uvr.exe and launch it from here. So, so once we're in that folder where we have FFmpeg, what we're going to do is extract it. So you need some type of 7z extracted to do this. Um, and to do that, you can just right click and do open with search the Microsoft store if you don't have one installed. And I use this Breezip. You can use whatever you want, Win, WinRAR, 9z, it doesn't really matter. But now once you have one of those unzippers installed, go ahead, right click open with and then go ahead and click on it and then once you're in this window you're going to do extraction so go ahead and click extract and it's going to extract into that folder so here it is it popped up so if we go back into the folder here you can see this build right here if you double click into it double click into it one more time you have all of these files here so now that we're in here you want to double click into bin and what we're going to do is copy all of these. So right click, copy, go out, go out, go out. And then we're going to put this inside of the folder that we cloned. So that is going to be this audio splitter underscore whisper. So inside of here, you're going to do paste. And so now you have FFmpeg installed in here and we should be good to go. Okay, we're almost done with installation. The last thing we're gonna do is open up Visual Studio Code. Let's go ahead and open it and then open the Audio Splitter Whisper folder. And then from the address bar, we're going to drag and drop into VS Code. And here we are. So depending on what type of hardware you have. If you have CUDA compatible hardware, we're going to run this script. If you have a CPU, you're going to run this CPU script. I'm going to run this CUDA script right here. So once you're inside of here, what you're going to do is first click on this bottom right corner. You should see you should see some type of Python version in here. If you don't go ahead and type Python and you should be able to see all these different Pythons that you have. We're using this 3.10.11 bit. And what we're going to do is go to the top window go to run and then click start debugging. So we're going to click Python file right here. 
and then make sure you're make sure you're in that setup CUDA bat and it's going to run so this window might pop up in the bottom right corner we're just going to go ahead and select no for now so this is going to install and this might take a while as it's going to be downloading a lot of files so just wait for that to finish up and we'll be back when it's done all right so once it's done installing now we're going to go ahead and activate the virtual environment just to check a couple of things so to do that what we're going to do is type the name of the virtual environment venv we're going to click tab we're going to type in s and then tab and then we're going to type in a and then tab and then we're going to click enter if you run into any issues here, most likely your PowerShell, your execution policy needs to be changed. So let's go ahead and change that. So in the search, go ahead and type up PowerShell and then go ahead and click run as administrator. Go ahead and click yes. And you're going to be in this window right here. So we're going to change it from restricted to remote signed. So this means that local scripts can run or anything by a trusted publisher can run as well. It decreases your security basically on your system. So do at your own risk. Once we're in here, what we're going to do is type in set execution policy and we're going to type in remote signed. And then when we're here, we're going to go ahead and do a yes to all. So once that is done, um, nothing is going to pop out and you're good to go. So let's go ahead, pop out of there. And then you should be able to rerun that command. So type in VENV tab S tab A tab and then enter. And here we are. And so that's just about it for the installation process. So let's talk a little bit about data. We're going to want at least 10 minutes of audio data. If you don't have 10 minutes, well, it might be able to train, but you're going to want at least minimum 10. If you train a model with 10 minutes and you deem it's not good enough, well, you can always add more data to it after the fact, but I would stick with 10 first just to train a model in a reasonable time and then see how it sounds after that. And if it sounds good, perfect. If you want to add more data samples, you always can though. And if you're curious, I trained my models on about three hours of audio. So three hours of clean audio and it produced some pretty decent models. But try 10 minutes first. I don't know if three hours is absolutely necessary. All right, so let's jump into the data processing part of the video. So hop into that folder, the audio splitter underscore whisper that you have, and we're going to create a new folder in here. So go ahead and right click, go to new and then click on folder. We're going to call this data. So inside of this data folder, you want to have your audio file. In this case, I'm going to use my most recent YouTube video, how to get AI voice models. So I programmed the script to take any video file or any audio file. So that shouldn't be any problem. But once you have your file, we're going to want to run it through UVR to remove any background noise. All right, so go ahead and open UVR. I'm using this Kim vocal model, but whatever's auto selected here should be fine for you. Um, what we're going to do is process this file. So what and so the easiest way to do this is just drag this into select input. It's going to put the folder path here and then go ahead and drag the folder address into output. So here's the output. Here's the input. And and let's say you have two files. What if you want to do two files? Well, then you can just drag the folder address into here into the input and then click on input and you'll see what files are going to be processed. So I'm only going to process the one. So if I redrag this into input and then click it, it's going to show me the one. Once you have your input and output selected, um, we're going to leave batch size at default. We're going to leave audio vo volume compensation on auto. We're going to select dot wav here. Like I said, I'm using Kim vocal one. I'm using GPU conversion and you're going to want to select vocals only. However, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to unselect that so I can show you what happens with the instrumental split as well. So you could start processing here, but there's a couple of additional settings I want to have you adjust. So click this wrench right here. You're going to go into choose options. You're going to click advanced MDX net options, and then you're going to click denoise output. So that's going to denoise the output a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead, close window. And then now we can go ahead and click start processing. So depending on how fast your hardware is, it's going to take some time to process. So you'll see the status bar progressing right here. And once that is finished inside of the main folder, you're going to get two files, a vocals and instrumentals. So here's the instrumentals. 
So you can hear the song in there and then you can hear my voice in the background because the song is super low. So let's go ahead and take a listen to pre-split and then after split. How to get AI voice models for the AI voice changer. So if you don't have the hardware to train or you simply how to get AI voice models for the AI voice changer. So if you don't have the hardware to train or you simply just don't want to train. So from that sample, you can hear that the background music is mostly cut out of it. You can still kind of hear it a little bit, but awesome. And so you would do UVR for all of your data um, before you process it. So once we have that here, now we can head back on over into our Python script and start getting things running. So, so in this top left corner, we're going to go to Explorer and we're going to open it up and then we're going to go into the split underscore audio dot py. So once we're in here, what we want to do is go to this bottom right corner click on this this number 3.10 we're going to change our interpreter to our venv so we're going to go ahead and click that and you'll see that all the squigglies went away so once we have that we're going to want to set up our configuration file and that is this file right here so before we do anything in there we want to go to the configuration file go to rename and we're going to call it conf.yaml in here, we're going to select the language that our audio samples are in. We're going to be doing English. The only ones supported, I believe, are these models right now for Whisper X. But this works beautifully for Japanese as well as I've tried. Inside of model, we're going to leave. And then this last part is going to be diarization, which I'm going to show later in the video. And like I said earlier, my laptop with my i7-8650U was able to run on large V2. Uh, for those of you who know Whisper, if you modified anything, go ahead, go to file and then do save. And then we're going to go back into that split underscore audio dot py. So once we are in here, we're going to go into run. Go to start debugging and we're going to go ahead and once we're in here, we're going to go over to that folder, that data folder that we went into. And then if we double click into it, you won't see anything, but that's where your audio files should be. So I'm going to go ahead and click on data and then do select folder. All right. And it looks like I ran into an error. So Windows 2 system cannot find file specified. So let's go ahead and exit out. It looks like I actually need to activate my virtual environment. So go ahead and type in VENV. Go ahead, do scripts A, and then activate that. And then let's go ahead and rerun this. So go to run, start debugging. And then let's go ahead and select that data folder one more time, select folder, and we should be good to go, hopefully. Yes, so here we go. Now you should see this pop up. And don't worry about this error code here. It doesn't really mean anything. It will run just fine. It's going to perform transcription and alignment, and this is going to take time depending on how many you have. When it finishes, it's going to save, save, segment, all of these things, and let's go ahead and open the folder. So here is that data folder. Two new folders are going to be created, wave underscore files and output. Wave underscore files is going to contain the WAV files if what you put in was an MP4 file or a video file, but if it's empty, that's okay. Inside of output is going to be your now segmented audio data. So if we go into output, if you go into the name of the video, so in this case, remember that my file is called vocals.wave. If we go into that folder name now, you should see all of these different segments in here. And so that is pretty much it. If you have a bunch of different videos in here, you would just put all of those into one folder and you would follow all of these steps that I show in the RVC tutorial videos on how to add data sets into the training. So that is pretty much it for the vocal samples. However, there is one thing inside of here. There are actually two speakers. However, it's all put into one. So that can cause issues with training and we don't want that. So if we take a listen to this one and then we can go ahead and hear how the voice model sounds, you can hear two voices in there. So that's not what we want. Now you could manually select and choose and delete those. However, that is going to take a lot of time and there's a faster way to do this. So that is where this diarize comes in handy. So let's go ahead and set that up now. All right, so let's head on over into the Whisper X GitHub repository and we're going to scroll down until we see speaker diarization. And so what we need to do is accept and 
accept some user agreements for the following four models. Go ahead and click here and it's going to bring you over into this page and then we're going to go ahead and sign up. And once you finish signing up, you're going to need to confirm your email address. So go ahead and confirm your email address in your email. And once you've confirmed, you should have this new token uh, where you can click a button. So uh, let's go ahead and create a new token. Let's just call this uh, voice and roll, read, generate a new token. So inside of here, uh, you can see your hugging face token. Um, I'll go ahead and delete this after the video so that you guys can't use it. And what we're going to do now is now that we have our account is hop back on over to this GitHub page, right click segmentation, open a new tab, right click voice activity, open a new tab, right click detection, and then right click speaker diarization and you should have four new tabs that opened up. So let's click on the first one. Uh, what we're going to do here is agree to this right here. I'm going to say J Micah and then I'd put my GitHub repository here and I just put speaker diarization agree and access repository. And once you have all of these done, um, you will now be able to actually use these speaker diarization So go ahead, exit out of all four of those. Go on over into your hugging face token. Go ahead and copy token to clipboard. Go ahead and head on over into VS Code. Delete this, enter your hugging face token, and go ahead and put diarize to true. So it should be blue. And then go ahead, go to file, go to save, and then let's head back on over into split audio.py and we're gonna run this. And just so we don't get confused, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these inside of my data folders so that we only have vocals.wave. Go ahead and rerun the program. We're gonna select the data folder, select folder. Alrighty, and here we are. So now this one, I programmed to have a different file structure or a different folder structure. So if we go into that folders, if we go into that vocals folder, now you have a speaker zero and a speaker one. So inside of zero is going to be the Sakura Miko voice. And then inside of here is going to be mine because that audio file kind of merged that you heard earlier at 47, you're still going to have it in one of the two folders. So it's not that perfect yet. And so here we'll find it inside of my voice here at audio 46. And we can go ahead and hear how we voice on the sound. So that file I would delete. So I wouldn't want that. And so what I could do here is, you know, rename this to my name so that I don't get confused. But if you go into the other folder, here are the four audio files under the voice of Miko. So yeah, this is pretty cool because now you can split and you can have multiple speakers and you can have it split your audio. So um, if you're doing like it, so if it's like an interview or whatever, it'll split it into the two speakers and that makes it much easier to curate the data for multiple speakers in one audio file. And I forgot there's one more thing. There's this audio shortener that will cut files to 10 seconds or less. And this might be necessary for not getting out of memory issues. So, so this one is called audio shortener. Go ahead, go into audio shortener, go ahead, do um, F5 or 